takes a big step towards peace. Young people across the Middle East are ready for a more hopeful future, and governments throughout the region are realizing that terrorism and Islamic extremism are everyone's common enemy. Yesterday, I had the pleasure of meeting with both the Prime Minister of Israel and a man that's working very hard to become the primary minister of Israel in the longest-running election of all time, <laughs> Benny Gantz of the Blue and White Party. And both leaders joined me to express their support for this effort, proving that State of Israel looking for peace and that peace transcends politics by any measure, unmeasurable, that's what they want. On my first trip overseas as President, I visited the Holy Land of Israel. I was deeply moved and amazed by what this small country had achieved in the face of overwhelming odds and never-ending threats. The State of Israel comprises only a minuscule amount of land in the Middle East, and yet it has become a thriving center of democracy, innovation, culture, and commerce. Israel is a light unto the world. The hearts and history of our people are woven together. The land of Israel is an ancient home, a sacred place of worship, and a solemn promise to the Jewish people that we will never again repeat history's darkest hour. During my trip to Israel, I also met with Palestinian President Abbas in Bethlehem. I was saddened by the fate of the Palestinian people. They deserve a far better life. They deserve the chance to achieve their extraordinary potential. Palestinians have been trapped in a cycle of terrorism, poverty, and violence, exploited by those seeking to use them as pawns to advance terrorism and extremism. I returned from my visit determined to find a constructive path, and it's got to be a very powerful path forward in the Israeli-Palestinian conflict. To further this effort, I also met with President Abbas at the White House. Forging peace between Israelis and Palestinians may be the most difficult challenge of all. All prior administrations, from President Lyndon Johnson have tried and bitterly failed. But I was not elected to do small things or shy away from big problems. It's been a long and very arduous process to arrive at this moment. On Sunday, I delivered to Prime Minister Netanyahu my vision for peace, prosperity, and a brighter future for Israelis and Palestinians. This vision for peace is fundamentally different from past proposals. In the past, even the most well-intentioned plans were light on factual details and heavy on conceptual frameworks. By contrast, our plan is 80 pages and is the most detailed proposal ever put forward by far. As I have seen throughout my long career as a dealmaker, complex problems require nuanced, fact-based remedies. That is why our proposal provides precise technical solutions to make Israelis, Palestinians, and the region safer and much more prosperous. My vision presents a win-win opportunity for both sides, 
a realistic two-state solution that resolves the risk of Palestinian statehood to Israel's security. Today, Israel has taken a giant step toward peace. Yesterday, Prime Minister Netanyahu informed me that he is willing to endorse the vision as the basis for direct negotiations. And I will say the general also endorsed, and very strongly, with the Palestinians, a historic breakthrough. And likewise, we have really uh, a situation having to do with a race that is taking place right now. It will end, and we have the support, and it's very important to say this, of both parties and almost all people in Israel. They want peace, and they want peace badly. This is the first time Israel has authorized the release of a conceptual map illustrating the territorial compromises it's willing to make for the cause of peace, and they've gone a long way. This is an unprecedented and highly significant development. Mr. Prime Minister, thank you for having the courage to take this bold step forward. And, B.B., we have a lot of powerful people in this room, a lot of the people that can help make it work. So that's quite a thunderous applause. Thank you very much. Thank you. We will form a joint committee with Israel to convert the conceptual map into a more detailed and calibrated rendering so that recognition can be immediately achieved. We will also work to create a contiguous territory within the future Palestinian state for when the conditions for statehood are met, including the firm rejection of terrorism. <laughs> Under this vision, Jerusalem will remain Israel's undivided very important. Undivided capital. Calls for a two-state solution, including the state of Israel and the future state of Palestine. Under the plan, the Palestinians would have to reach certain benchmarks to achieve a state. Those benchmarks include rooting out terrorism, stopping what they call, quote, pay to slay, implementing steps toward free speech and other political reforms. Now, that sounds good, doesn't it? All right, it, it's good. Let's, let's confirm that. However, here's where I'm concerned. The plan is a basis for negotiations with Israel, Trump officials said, claiming many of the Palestinians' red lines are met including their cause for Palestinian state, now here it is, and a capital in parts of East Jerusalem. Now, he says that Jerusalem will be undivided, and yet they have a capital in East Jerusalem. He did not go into territory uh, uh, he did not go into uh, that territory of who will be in control of that part of Jerusalem, East Jerusalem. Usually, if a person, a uh, nation has a capital uh, somewhere, they are in control of that capital area, that capital territory. 
So would the Lord consider this dividing Jerusalem? This is my concern. Then as I was watching and I was asking the Lord, please give me insight, Lord. I don't know whether this is the covenant with many or not. And then as the president continued to speak about the um, the peace plan, uh, I find that um, it will take several years for the Palestinians to sign on board. Well, when he said that, a light bulb came off in my head. Uh, it says that in, in Daniel that uh, they will confirm a covenant with many. Now this if, and I repeat, if this is the covenant with many, it would have to be confirmed with the 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 many people. And so I believe that perhaps, just a thought, but perhaps if this is the covenant with many, then uh, we won't start the tribulation until the Palestinians sign on board. And they won't be doing this for a few years, as the president pointed out in his speech. I will try to uh, copy his uh, video and put it on my channel shortly. Anyway, it goes on to say, quote, this plan will double Palestinian territory and set the capital of Palestinian state in East Jerusalem, where the United States will happily open an embassy, Trump said. Our vision will end the cycle of Palestinian independence or Palestinian dependence on charity and foreign aid. Now, I don't know if this is the covenant with many, but uh, I don't know also how God is going to look on this part of it as uh, a capital in parts of East Jerusalem. Um, I don't know. It doesn't seem that he would look favorably on this. Um I think we will know when we start seeing terrible things happen in this country. And if we see terrible things happening to Trump or his family, we will know then that God is not happy with this. Um, just as he did when Bush tried to do this, and when others tried to do this, terrible things happened uh, because he was not happy. So will this be something that, that God doesn't mind? Or is this, in God's mind, dividing Jerusalem? I don't know God's mind. I just know that this made me very uneasy. And as the speech started, I had already gotten a heads up that this was in this was going to be in the speech, and I immediately got sick to my stomach um, because I was uh, very concerned. Because what John Roberts of Fox News said right before the speech started was, would it, the uh, plan includes giving parts of the East Jerusalem to Palestine. The way he worded it was about like that. I don't know if those were his exact words, but that's what I got out of what he said. And, and I immediately got sick to my stomach. And, um, but as I listened, uh, President Trump says that Jerusalem will not be divided but to me this is in fact for all practical purposes dividing Jerusalem in my mind and who cares what's in my mind I want to know what's in God's mind about this um, so there you have it guys I, I don't know anymore uh, I, I will listen to the the scholars with their take on this. I would like to know what uh, what uh, others say, but um, this does concern me. I would like for my concern to be allayed, and so that I can <laughs> I cannot be upset about this. Um, but here's one good way of looking at it: if 
this is